All right, Black Power family, it's the general. I'm in the house, y'all. We in the house, family. I know, I know. Got, got a, a heavy hitting day today. You understand what I'm saying? Gonna be me and the uh, young God, Pharaoh, gonna hook up tonight. We're gonna get on Vladimir, DJ Vladimir, the the uh the Yugoslavian con artist, DJ Vlad, trying to disrespect Dr. Savy. We got to dig in the vampire's chest today. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm most definitely bringing the sun, the almighty sunshine of Amon Ra and a damn stake and hammer to nail this damn vampire and put his ass in the grave. Okay, that's gonna be going down after this particular video, this particular lesson, you understand? And then I'm on uh, Sarah's page today. We are dealing with the color spectrum of cosmic consciousness. And, and so I'm gonna be dealing with the various colors. And the other day I dealt with the chakras. So that was the first video, you know what I'm saying, of that series. So each one of these, we got an Egyptian series going down. We got the color spectrum, the uh, you know, the black divinity, Egyptian chakras. We're getting down today in, in the upcoming week. So this is a heavy hitting day today. Uh don't miss shit. Don't do it. I'm in the middle of a thunderstorm slash a tornado warning. So we pray. We pray that, God damn it, while we doing the video, the general just don't float away. You understand what I'm saying? And, and go off into the ethers. If, if they do, God damn it, they still going to have a fight. They still going to have a goddamn fight because the black power deities going to bring me back on down to the planet. Okay, so let's let's buckle up today. Uh, and uh, the other day when we was dealing with uh, the Abydos Kings list, you know what I'm saying? I will be highlighting. Some of the greatest of the kings left. You understand what I'm saying? And not just for niggas to just, see, this was wrong with us. We're not militarizing our history. See, I don't just sit this shit up here for a nigga to go up on the goddamn, yes, yeah, spread the information, but it's for the militarization of liberation. Not just for you to just, you know, you know, jaw jack and say, oh, I know about a particular king. Or I know of a motherfucker. Is it transforming? your community? Is it transforming you as an individual to move further than you ever moved before? If you're in the same position, then you're jaw jacking. It's supposed to be, you know, transforming information. You see what I'm saying? Like the general say, motivating African minds to make major moves. Motivate. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't motivating and innovating with your teachings, then you ain't teaching, nigga. Because it ain't enough just to spew the information. You got to innovate. You got to motivate. You got to move the goddamn crowd. You know what I'm saying? So I don't just come up here to just put no goddamn, I come up here to move the goddamn crowd, okay? And so, you know, and the best way to move is to drop nothing but goddamn nuclear bombs on the information. You see what I'm saying? So today, you know, we're gonna be dealing with that. And, and, you know, and I always speak highly of Africa. You know, that's the only way we're gonna win. You understand that it's a long goddamn way to go. You know what I'm saying? And when we talk about Egypt, we're talking about, you know, the greatest of our history. This is our greatest walk. You understand what I'm saying? This is our greatest uh, uh, walk as a people on this planet. You understand? That? And when you're talking about rebuilding, and you, even if you're a, a, a winning team out there, you look at the eras when you dominate. You look at the era, especially them championship teams. They got the goddamn blueprint. They're just trying to get the right players back into the, you know, in the rotation that they had, you understand, in the beginning. Like the Lakers, they had Kobe, they had Shaq, they had a couple more players. You had Jordan, you had Pippen. They know how to do it. That's the same shit that Oakland done done. So when, when Jordan and them put it down and put them three goddamn all-stars on one damn team and, and, lie and put some heavy, you know, uh, 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 which bench players behind that they had the one of the greatest teams ever, and so the Lakers because Phil Jackson, the, the beast, went right on over there and applied. You understand the same process, and then LA done the same thing. You understand, went over there and did three. You understand what I'm saying, and so there's a, a particular formula in how to win. 
And so you niggas want to come up out here with all this bullshit, nigga, it ain't too many ways to win. You understand what I'm saying? That's why your ass ain't winning. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to do what's necessary. So when we talk about, you know, rebuilding, yeah, we got to talk about Egypt, the longest civilization that ever existed. And then I'm talking about along with Nubia. Because you're talking about at least six, 7,000 years of continuous nationhood. I must say that. Nationhood. Okay, we're not talking about villages. We're not talking about, you know, motherfuckers living in huts and little bit. Most of these goddamn European uh, uh, cities that they talk about, Rome and Athens, them fucking villages. It ain't no goddamn city. When, we, when you talk about Waset and you talking about Memphis and Heliopolis and you talking about a, these are cities that still standing right now today. You understand what I'm saying? The remnants of them are still standing right now today. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to look at what you already done. And history ain't just some goddamn words. That's what's wrong with you, nigga. Because when you teach it, that's how you teach it. You understand? This is the DNA of our ancestors. If you put down in your life whatever you uh you know put your energy in, you hope that your babies will benefit and and carry and, and get the the benefits and the inheritance of your labor. So when we talk about the history, that's the inheritance of the labor of our, and not just some goddamn words. They put it down for you because many of them, you know, many of our ancestors knew that goddamn it, that one day you would forget. That's why they did it so uh, megalithic. You understand what I'm saying? So that it will remain for thousands and thousands and thousands of years because they knew because they already knew that the wicked beast that was on the outside when he come in, he liked to burn. He liked to carve out you know what I'm saying? So they went to big and big, bigger and deeper and using harder metals and stones that the, the goddamn cracker, he didn't have no weapons or no tools that could carve the damn information out. So that's what our ancestor did. So it will always remain here forever and forever more. Okay? And so when I put the Abydos Kings list up there, it shot a lot of shit down. When you shoot down the Bible, you shoot down the Quran. You shoot down every motherfucking thing that came after it. You ain't got this necessarily go one and we do go from one de uh, denomination, one particular aspect just to go into it in detail. But when you attack Genesis, goddammit, and you destroy Genesis, you damn near destroy it and you don't damn near, technically you destroy every goddamn thing that come after it, whether it's Quran, whether it's goddamn Christianity, shittyanity, Serapis worship, whether it's Mormonism, whether it's seventh day of Venice, eighth day of Venice, ninth day of Venice, it don't matter what kind of goddamn of Venice it is. When you destroy the goddamn book of Genesis, you destroy all that that come after it because all of them are built and uh, validate that particular book. And so if the book of Genesis came before all and that, you know, and, and the Quran say that Allah sent Genesis, well, goddamn it, he, he's He's connected just no less than, you know, connect just like the Hebrew, just like the Christian. He's connected to Genesis. He's connected to the Bible. Because it validates that in the Quran that Allah sent the Bible, where he's a lying ass motherfucker, whether he sent it or he didn't send it. If he say he sent it, then he must accept the goddamn contradiction that's in the book too. So goddamn it, and then we got to, we're going to talk deeper and deeper into that. But when we're talking about ancient Egypt, you understand there's many origins that people try to come and you got some fake niggas like the Moors say some garbage about ancient Egypt. Then you got these is Negroes. These are silly Negroes gone wild. You got Muslim niggas. Don't know a goddamn thing. They don't even know about Islam, let alone Egypt. You understand what I'm saying? They got a bootleg Islam out there. And it all bootleg, but goddamn. You understand what I'm saying? You got Negroes out here saying they Muslims and the nigga don't even know how to spell Muhammad. You understand what they bootleg jailhouse Muslims. You understand what I'm saying? They get their religion in jail in the bottom of the, of the pit. You understand where a nigga can tell you anything and you ain't got no validation to prove whether he right or wrong. Okay, so we getting in here today and we getting sound facts that what? That ancient Egypt came from the south. It did not come from out of Mesopotamia, such as the Bible says. You understand? Because they teach that, you know what I'm saying, that the, the Egypt was the son of Ham, and Ham came off, who was the son of Noah, came up off the boat. 
and there was no Egypt before the flood. And that's what I brought out in Albert. You see, you don't know the story. If you knew the story and you knew both, you got to know your history first, and then you got to know the whole, the, you got to know the players on the board before you start diving and making a goddamn interpretation of the book. You got to understand all the prophets. You, know, you ain't necessarily got to read it. You got to go and get a bio on all the prophets and how they connected. Then you know how to move the players on the board. You don't know the play. You don't know their bio. You don't know their resume. You don't know the story. Okay, and so if you knew the story of the Bible, then you would know that there was no Egypt before the flood. Why? Because Egypt is the son of Ham, and Ham is the son of Noah. And when the earth flooded, it was only eight people on the boat. Uh, Noah and his wife, uh, and his three sons, and they three wives, which would make eight people. Okay, eight people. So Egypt, Ethiopia, and all of that was born after the flood. But what does the Abydos king list do? It showed that not only that there was kings on the before the flood, there was kings after the flood, which it should not have been nobody on the planet but them eight people. Everybody else was eradicated but them eight people. And so we show a 2,000 year king list consecutive. You know what I'm saying? Without any break in that king's list. So if there was a flood, even if Egypt, just say for the argument's sake that there was, Egypt was existed at the time of some so-called flood, there would have been an abrupt stop at that particular time. And I showed that what? It was in the what? The fifth dynasty. So it shouldn't have been no sixth dynasty and no seventh dynasty and no eighth and ninth and tenth and eleventh and none of that. But you got megalithic structures all through ancient Egypt, 3,000 years, megalithic structures. If a flood been no, it wouldn't have been enough people to build no megalithic structure. You would have had to repopulate the goddamn planet in order to get. And then how long would that have taken? Okay, so we've got to throw this garbage out. And I mean, it can't no be no more. We gonna be friends. I'm not friends with no nigga that's lying. You're lying. God damn it! I'm I'm telling you straight up. I don't give a fuck who you is. I speak to you in kindness. As my brother, but nigga, when it comes to this information, nigga, we is at war. You was lying to the people, and I got to expose you for who you are. Okay, any offshoots of the Bible that's telling these goddamn lies, fooling our people. Egypt is an indigenous African civilization, and we're gonna prove that. You, we're gonna prove that. Hey, you know, ain't no ham or none of that. Ham could not have been the father of Egypt because Egypt existed before goddamn ham. Okay, Egypt existed before goddamn Ham. So how in the fuck is Ham going to be the uh, father of Egypt? We got to stop lying. We got to quit telling these goddamn lies. And then they curse every motherfucking nigga in the Bible, and you niggas still believe in it. You got these sick Hebrews, and they sick. The niggas is sick. The shit that they say out their mouth, they say a few good things, and it's, it's submerged in a whole lot of fuck things. You know, that's like sprink sprinkling sugar on shit. And I'm not going to spray. I'm going to nigga, we're going to bake a whole new cake, all righteous and divine ingredients. We can't sprinkle sugar. Oh, Jesus had black feet. So what? So did Bill Cosby have black feet. But the nigga putting pills all in motherfucking women drinks and shit and doing all that kind of goddamn dumb shit. They say, oh, Jesus had woolly hair. So did R. Kelly. Nigga, he had woolly hair, but he running around here with these little babies doing all this fuck shit. Just having black skin and woolly hair don't mean you divine, nigga. And they play to you to you niggas ego. Oh, Jesus was black. Man, this, that, no third. Motherfucker, that's playing to you a nigga ego. That's sprinkling sugar on shit so that you an accepting. And I'm not accepting none of that shit. You niggas can get the hell on up out of here with the garbage. It's time to come with the truth. And we got to understand that Egypt is solely indigenously, indigenously, indigenously African. Okay? Got to say that. Indigenous, indigenously African. When you got them big African lips, it's sometimes it's hard to express these goddamn European terms. You know what I'm saying? You get these European words, they don't come out necessarily, come out like they supposed to come out. Okay? Native to Africa. Okay? We're going to prove that. You understand that? No Mesopotamia, none of that. Today, we're going to deal with two of the earliest kings of ancient Egypt, Narma and the Scorpion King. I know you think 
that that motherfucker, the rock and shit is the score of nigga, get up out of your madness. Come up out of your nightmare. Okay, come up off of the lean and all of that. You understand what I'm saying? Here they go. They know how to use this goddamn psychological illusional warfare on you nigga and deter you from the right. And then the goddamn sick niggas, the Hebrews and all, they'll come and use that seat. This is, you know what I'm saying? And feed off of that. They feed these niggas. So we're dealing with Narma and we're dealing with the, uh, the Scorpion King. And we're going to see that both of these great kings, what, come from the south, south or west. It's coming from the beginning of the Nile. And the Nile flows, what, from south to north. Let's go on and get some uh, visuals up. We're going straight in because I got so much to do today. I'm not holding no punches on nobody. Okay, I'm going to get straight to the information. Let me get it on up here. We're in the house today. Uh-oh, family in the house. I want to thank you for all your support. What up, Patak? I just happened to look in. We got a, a, a tornado warning and all that shit out here. So we we prayed and shit that, you know, no 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 winds come through, you understand? But with the guy, Amin Ra and Patak and Sekhmet and all the great netters that, you know, they will bless us and with a pass today, you see? Uh-oh. The Rock, yeah, they say The Rock is the Scorpion King. The motherfucking crackhead king, that's what he is. Let me get the... Uh, let me get the uh, uh, lecture up right quick. Let me get this lecture up. I got so many damn lectures. Wait a minute, is this the right one? Okay, it's the up. It's the up. All right, here we go. Here we go. We about to work out, family. Get your notebook. Get your notebook. And make sure y'all get on over to Sara page after this, because I'm working out. You know what I'm saying? We're dealing with this color spectrum. Uh-oh, let me put that on there. I meant to put that on over there, too. Let me put that on over here, too. Well, I can break it down. Let me just break it down. Let me just bring it on down. There's no armor. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, the, the, what's, wait a minute, let me see, I'm trying, hold up, fam, let me get exactly where, you know, I put, I got so much information in here, where is Norm at? He might be on the other. Might be on the other. Hold on, fam. Is it over here? Where you at, Norma? You know, it's time to rock and roll. That's unlike me to not have no idea where the hell my information is at. Okay, it's not here. That's for damn sure. Not there. Okay. That's true. Not like the great God. Hold on. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Okay. That's unbelievable. 
Okay. If it ain't there, then where in the hell is it? Hold up, fam. Oh, hold up. Hold up. That's what happened when you got so much shit. That's ridiculous. Okay, let me bring this one up. I, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. It must be over here. I got to open up four or five damn lectures just to get this information. But keep it, let's keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm, as I move, we're we going to see what's, what's uh, very revealing about ancient Egypt is that even at the time of the first kings, you see what I'm saying? Egypt is already highly developed. Okay, already highly developed. Okay, it does it do not come in like other civilizations where it's you know is it just you know the first king they evolving you know you know Egypt comes in already language already fully developed. Okay, fully developed language already established. You see what I'm saying? You know. Very elaborate tunes already from the beginning. This is almost unbelievable. Straight up. It's almost unbelievable because I was doing this research and, you know, I had a whole bunch of slides, which right now I can't find one. You know what I'm saying? I can't actually find one of these slides. And this shit is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? This is so, you know, this is not like me at all to not have know exactly where my shit is at. That's ridiculous. Hold on, family. It's almost like it was damn deleted almost. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like it was deleted. Like these goddamn beasts and broke in my shit. This is unbelievable. This is truly unbelievable. Because I'm actually, okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay. Let's rock, baby. See? See, I found it. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Okay. And so I introduced everybody to the Abydos Kings list. We went over that the other day. You understand? It's, it is the oldest record of a dynastic rule on the planet. No people, no China man, no no Indian from over there, the Hindu man, no Mesopotamia, no biblical, no nothing. This is an original document. This is original document from the great King Seti the first. And you see right there his son in front of him, Ramesses the second, and you see his hand is outstretched and it's saying, Behold, my son. You know, these are your great forefathers whom you should study and study well and in doing so, it will elevate you to, the, to, to become the greatest king that will ever live, okay? Now the first king on that list, if you go all the way to the top and you see the cartoons right there at the top, you see the oval and you see, you see, a, uh, you see a reed and you see a, a, a rectangle, you understand, in, in, in a water symbol inside it, it look like, you know, when you make water, like little M's connected. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, that's uh, Narma or Mena, okay? Narma or Mena, and many people believe that that's the same king and with various names, okay? Okay, and so let me move forward. Now, according to, like I said, if you're from the biblical aspect, you, if you come from the Bible, you'll be totally confused. 
because when you when you go through the Bible, Egypt, whose name is Miserim, was was the son of Ham. And if you look from the uh, the second from the top, you see Ham was born in twenty four forty. Supposedly, we know the man never lived. There's no Jephthah, no Ham, no Shem, no Cush. According, you know, in the aspects of the Bible, this these is just fictional individuals, okay, to confuse you about the historical realities of our people, okay. So if you see that Miserine, which is supposedly Egypt, is the son of Ham, and then you look to the left and you see the Great Pyramids are standing at twenty five fifty BCE. Then how the fuck is this, you got pyramids in Egypt if it ain't no damn Egypt yet? You see what I'm saying? Ham is his damn father and the damn pyramids are standing before Ham. So how the fuck can Ham be the father of Egypt if the pyramids is already standing before Ham is born? Okay? We got to throw this garbage out of there. Okay? And if you go along with the Bible, it says the flood happened around 2344 BCE. How could that be? How could that be? Once we understand that when the flood, you see the flood at 2344, that there was only eight people that survived the flood. And that was Ham, Shem, and Jephthah, their three wives, Noah and his wife, which is eight people. There ain't no Egypt. There's no Ethiopia. There's no children of Ham. There's no children of Shem. There's no children of Jephthah. All of that come after the flood. So there should have not been no Egypt before the flood. But the fact is we see the pyramid and they could be far older, which they are far older than 2550 BC. So it proves that Egypt was before the Bible, before the flood, before Ham. And so there's no way you can tell the history of Egypt based on the goddamn Bible. Let me keep it moving. So when you look and you see at the top to the right, you see the fifth dynasty, the, the great flood, 2344. You see, so the uh the great the so-called great flood of the Bible fell in the fifth dynasty. Okay, well, if it fell in the fifth dynasty, it shouldn't have been no Egypt before the flood, but for argument's sake, we'll just say, okay, oh Egypt existed, and then there's the great flood that wiped out everybody. It should not have been no sixth dynasty. Okay, it should not have been no, because it wasn't no damn people on the damn planet. How the hell are you going to, and then you could go in all these dynasties and they build in megalithic structures. You got six, you can go in the sixth dynasty. They got megalithic structures. You understand what, even in the intermediate period, was, which is a period when there wasn't a national leader, but it was still high culture. So I don't want people to think that just because you see first intermediate, uh, intermediate period, that just means it's not a national leader at the time, but there are chiefdoms, there are city states, and they still got high culture and high technology. Okay, you continue on into the middle kingdom, you got the 11th dynasty, you got a Amenahat, you got a Amenahat the first, the Amenahat the third, and it's under the, uh, I think Amenahat the third, he built a a, a pyramid, one of the largest pyramids. And you see right there, the last pyramid built by Amenahat III. Okay, and it's, so there's no way that you could have a flood in 2344 and you still building goddamn megalithic structures, 2100 to 70. No way, because it would have taken thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years first to repopulate the earth. And then secondly, it would have took hundreds of thousands of years for you to recollect the great wisdom it would take to build a pyramid. You ain't just going up and just build no, that shit take hundreds of thousands of years because you got over a hundred different sciences and arts that it takes to cohesively intertwine and come together to even build the great pyramid. Okay. So when we talking about Narma, okay, this is Narma right here. Now, the first thing I can show you and this is on the Narma's palette. So you can already see how very exquisite they are carving in stone already. First king, see, highly developed, already got a crown on his head. You understand? Got a war mace. You understand what I'm saying? So when we talking about Pharaoh and we talking about the office of Pharaoh, 
it was already fully developed when the first king of Egypt sat on the throne. It was no development stage to ancient Egypt. Because when you look at the greatness of ancient Egypt, the most megalithic structures of ancient Egypt was built in the first, third, the third and fourth dynasty. When you're talking about the Great Pyramids, you're talking about the Great Pyramids of Giza were built, and the earlier ones were built between the third and the fourth dynasty. Okay, the greatest structures. You see what I'm saying? So Egypt came into existence full blown, and the, the reason why we don't see the development because they want to lie, they want to try to hide the fact that it was African in origin and that the Africans up the river in Sudan, in Ethiopia, Uganda, Rwanda, uh, uh, Burundi, all in the central East Africa are the oldest Africans on the planet and that they came down into Egypt and established Egypt and that's what the facts gonna teach. Okay, when you look here on the Nama's palette, let me show you the full palette. Let me show you the full palette. Let me show you the full palette right here. This is the full palette. Okay, now if you see him on, in, you know, with the, now when you see him with the crown on of Upper Egypt, that's the, that's the long crown. You understand what I'm saying? With the, like the ball on the top of it. See, you, that's the principal side. And that crown is the crown of Upper Egypt. Upper Egypt is going to the south, okay? And then, so you see right there that the, the, the principal crown is the crown of Upper Egypt, okay? And when we say up, we talk about, we're not talking about, you know, I'm going to show you a map. First and foremost, let me show you a map. Matter of fact, let me get that up. Let me see. I might, I got the map here. I ain't going to bring nothing else up. So y'all could get a clear understanding right here. So if you're looking at this map right here, we, we looking at the nomies of Egypt, upper Egypt and lower Egypt. Now lower Egypt is to the right. You see where you see Memphis is the number one. And when we say nomies, those are counties. You see what I'm saying? Just like you got a county in your state. So you got 20 counties in upper Egypt. And then if you look to the left, you see that's, uh, that. I mean, in Lower Egypt, to the right is Lower Egypt. That's the Delta region. It looks almost like a lotus. You understand what I'm saying? And then Upper Egypt is the stem. You see 22 to the left, 22 down to one. And if you look down at number three, you will see Nikon, which is, which they call Hyron Canopolis. Okay, this is where Namur, the first king, of Egypt that united, reunited both the upper and lower Egypt. Matter of fact, it was no Egypt until, you know, Nama or Mena established, if you look to the right and you see number one, Memphis, because the first capital of Egypt was Memphis. So until Mena established Memphis, there is no Egypt, okay? There is no Egypt before Memphis. So it was Narma, so whom many believe one of his name was Mena. And that's where you get Memphis, okay? And we're gonna look at the great God Men. Okay, so up, Upper Egypt is to the left, 22 to one. That's Upper Egypt. So it's clear that when I talk about the crown, the larger crown is the crown of Upper Egypt. And then when you see the short crown, that's the crown of Lower Egypt. So you see the principal crown and the crown that had the most power was the crown of the South. And it shows that where he came from, Nikon is deep in the South. That's deep. He, um, I mean, technically that's Nubia. So before Narma established Memphis, before he builds that city, Memphis, and establishes Egypt, 22 through one on the left side, that's Ethiopia. Ain't no Egypt. You see what I'm saying? Egypt technically is to the right where you see number one, Memphis, Hecopita, in the which is the Delta region. Technically, that's Egypt. Everything 22 and up 
is technically Ethiopia before Egypt. There is no Egypt. And as you can see, before he establishes Memphis, you can see they already got 22 districts that is already in existence. And you can see, look at it, that they come what? From the south to the north. They coming down the river. You see what I'm saying? One, two. You So they coming from the south. And then even when you get to Memphis, you can see that they come from the south. You see two, three, four, five, six. You know, they come from the south. So the culture is coming from the south down to the north. Okay? So all these niggas that's talking about, you know, Egypt is not African and this, that, and the third. Nigga, you is out your damn mind. You don't understand nothing about the culture. You're illegitimate and you do not have the uh, the uh, the validation to teach anything about the Nile Valley at all. Okay, so it's clear that we showing where the first king, Narma, come from Nikon, which is number three. If you're looking at the districts of Upper Egypt, which is technically Ethiopia, ancient Ethiopia, you see he comes from the third district. Okay, he comes from the third district, which is Hierakopolis. And Nikon is uh, the Hawk city, city, which Heru was the dominant deity of that uh, district. That's why they call the early kings the Heru kings. Okay, they call them the Heru kings. So when we come back over here to this principal scene, and you see to the left, that's the principal side. Because you see, he's almost as large as the whole palette. He's almost as large, and when you look to the right, you see he got the crown of Lower, which is a very small scene. He's conquering that region at that time. Okay, so we're proving beyond no doubt that the kings of Upper Egypt were the primordial, primary, principal kings of the Nile Valley. That it did not come from no outside from no Mesopotamia or no Europe or no goddamn where, we are proving that that king, the original king, Nama, and even Scorpion, which we're gonna touch on Scorpion, were from the south, okay? They were from the south. Now, as you can see at the top of the palette, now, for anybody that wanna look this up, the Nama's palette, this is the oldest historical record of ancient Egypt. I didn't say Ethiopia. I didn't say Nubia, I said Egypt. Okay, so this is the oldest historical record of ancient Egypt. And you can see he has the apron on. If you're looking at Norma on both, he had the mallet on. You understand what I mean? He got his bull tail. If you look on the principal to the left, to the print, you'll see from on his backside, you see he got the bull uh, tail, and I'm gonna get off into that. If you look at the top, you see who had a root. The black woman is God. The black woman is God. You understand? So you see how they rule at the top of the palette. You understand what I'm saying? You even see the uh, uh, the replica of the Egyptian temple, which you see at uh, Saqqara. You can see that the whole aspect of ancient Egypt is already in existence. You understand what I'm saying? How you, you know damn well, don't know civilization come into exi existence full blown like that. And the fact that they cut it off from ancient Nubia and try to hide the fact that e Nubia is the mother of ancient Egypt is what put people in turmoil like that. And then, then see, that's the way they can slide the alien in on you and say, oh, the alien has something because we got to explain how Egypt come into existence full blown. How was they able? Because you're not showing the even more ancient development that come up out of uh, Nubia, okay? And so let me move forward. Here again, showing you clearly. And now, you see the crown of, of Upper Egypt. Wait a minute. Where's, where's them? Uh, I might have already then. No, I didn't. Let me go get it. What is this? Let me go get it. It might be over here. Let me show you where this crown comes from. Let me show you where this crown comes from. Where is that? I'm gonna work out on these Nick Rock. Know what I'm saying? Where is that at? Lord, I swear. 
When you need some, God damn it. I got so much shit. I'm in the process of just, you know, getting it all together. I just had it. And I need to show y'all this. It might actually be over here. I just had it, too. Just had it. It was over here. If I don't get it immediately, I'm not going to chase it down because I got more work to do. You understand? Here it go. Right here. I'm going to just go on. The, matter of fact, I need to put it over here. Fuck that. I need to put it right on over here. Need to put it right on over here. All right. And that way, when I get ready to put this Norma King up there, okay? So here you see the uh, the crown of Upper Egypt. We're in effect right now, family. When I say I'm going to prove that it comes from the South, then I'm going to do that. So when you look at the crown of Upper Egypt, you can see that. And I got even more hair, you know, hairstyle. You see, when a man uh, make a crown or he make a hat, the hat is conforming to a man's hair, hairstyle. If a man got dreadlocks or whatever, you see how they had that bag. If a motherfucker got a short haircut, he going to have a do-rag. You understand what I'm saying? It's conforming to, and many times, the, the natural crown of a man's head becomes the blueprint for the ceremonial crown. Okay, so you see the ceremonial crown of Nama, of, of Asa, is nothing but a ceremonial replica of the natural crown of the African man and woman. Okay, so when you come over here and look at Nama, where you can see the tradition, you got to show where these traditions come from. You can't just say, oh, e uh, Egypt come out of Europe. Egypt come, a motherfucker will show the cultural connection, show the, 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 the genetic connection to what you see in the Egyptian culture and make the comparison to anything in Europe or goddamn Mesopotamia to justify you saying I'm out of Mesopotamia, come out of goddamn Europe. Here's the Scorpion King. Okay, now we seeing something. You understand? Nobody ever show us this. This is a mace head. This is a this was found at Nikin. This was found at Nikin along with the uh with the uh Norma mace head. There's two mace heads. If you see how he got that uh, mace in his hand, it's a ceremonial mace, though. It's not, it wasn't made for nobody in a crackhead. It was a ceremonial mace. Okay, and so this was the ceremonial uh, scorpion king. You see the scorpion right next to its face, if you look over, which is symbolic of the African goddess. Okay, now you see him, he got something like a, a, a is what you call it's almost like a shovel you know what i'm saying where you and so you can see he's and this is a, a ceremonial ritual scene just like you know when they get ready to build the building and the, and the people come out and they have a ceremony where they take one shovel of dirt and you know they throw it symbolically symbolically to let you know that the the great works of the building is about to uh commence so this is a ceremony ritual where they on holy ground and so a temple is about to be established. But this, these are the earlier kings from the south that's coming down north. And as you can see right behind them, what do you see? You see the twa, which they call the pygmy, which you see is best, which is pata. So you already see they don't show that, that, did, that the twa were very interesting. Matter of fact, in front of him. You see the br the brother, and these are priests. If you look at the top, you can also see those are twa. It's only about two pictures, which I'm gonna show on the normal uh, mace head, which you can see a little bit clearer. You see what I'm saying? So you see them up there with totem poles. And the first totem pole that you see at the top, that's a placenta. That's that to show you. That's his. That's the uh, king scorpion's placenta. Showing you that he deified his mama. He deified procreation. Okay, he he deified childbirth. Okay, they the black woman was God the very day that Egypt was established, and it was already a a a a, a ceremonial practice, a great spiritual practice, long before Egypt came into existence. Let me keep it moving.
So this is the true Scorpion King. And so when we come back here, you see that Narma and the Scorpion King come down the river, come down the river from the south with their African traditions. And you can see that the crown of Upper Egypt is a ceremonial crown, a replica of the natural crown of the African man and, and African woman. See, now this is the crown of Lower Egypt. This is the this is the secondary crown. And at one point in time, they combine both of them. Okay, they combine both of them, but this is the secondary crown. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't have the kind of power. They didn't have the kind of wealth that the kings of Upper Egypt had. You understand? We respect the kings of Lower Egypt nonetheless because they were still African, but they did not have the wealth. They did not have the traditions that the... Uh, the bloodline from up the river had. So the principal crown of Upper Egypt became the primary crown. Now look at this. This is Narma's tomb. Now look at this shit, man. I'm just being real. When I knew, I say, ain't this a, di do you see how many rooms he had? Do you see the distance? So in each room, you know, each grade, now these are rooms now. Because he would have had uh, a master bar on top of this. This is ridiculous how people, you know, Egypt was full blown when it started. So it would have been a master bar on top of these rooms. And in each one of those burial, one of them rooms, there would have been nothing but jars, wells, furniture, jewelry. You understand what I'm saying? Now look how many it is. This is one tomb of the tomb a normal, okay, at Albedo, uh, subsidiary, uh, subsidiary uh, graves of AHA, okay, AHA, you know, you got Norma, you got AHA, you got Mena, so they was some of the earliest kings, many people believe AHA and Norma, you understand, could have been the same king, you understand, and that those were various names, or they were, AHA was the son of Norma, but regardless, this is actually one, this is not many kings, this is one tomb. And all of those burials that, uh, or rooms that you see is for one king. Okay, now you look at this, this is the first dynasty. Now, where is the goddamn tombs of the Bible? Where is the tombs of Mesopotamia? Where is the tombs of the ancient Hindu? Where is the tombs like this that go back into 4,000 and 5,000 BC? This is not a civilization that's just getting started. You understand what I'm saying? So right here you see Mena, okay? And I seen this statue. I seen this statue when I went to uh, Britain. I, I tried to get in here. I'll show y'all the next time. I took, no, it was at the uh, Flinders Petri Museum. Okay, they got another uh, large head. Of, now, how is they carving on it? So you can see even from the old Mex, you can see how large these large heads. And, and you know, this is at 3000 BC, though. You understand what I'm saying? This is at 3000 BC. They already, now you understand carving stone. You need the damn tools. You got to build the skill. They would have had to been trying to craft that art at least thousands and thousands of years before they can actually perform on this level. Okay, so if they this head was carved at 3001 or during the reign of this King Mena, okay, under this King Mena at 3000 BC, how long did it take them to develop the damn science, to develop this, the tools to be able to carve on this level? Okay, so you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of years before 3,100 BC. Just like the pyramid. Motherfucker put up the pyramid 2,500, 2,550 BC. Well, bitch, it took damn near 250,000 years to develop. You can't just say the pyramid was built in 20, bitch. What about all the 250,000 years of development it would have taken to even get to that damn point? You got to look, you got to go deeper than that. So when I showed y'all on the Abydos Kings list, I showed you, you know, when we looked at the first one, if you go, you see the, you see the uh, eye blown, you see, do you know, you see some, uh, some, you know, some sticks coming up out the top of it. Then you see the water symbol. 
and then you see the read symbol, okay? And so in their mind, it means Mena, and that's okay. You understand, he's the first king, and whether we pronounce it Mena or we just put up the sacred symbols of our ancestors, that's who it is, because whenever they call or build, they'll put the symbolisms of that particular king all over the architecture, all to let you know that's who it is, okay? And so again, we looking at, you know, when Narma come down and reunites upper and lower Egypt. Something went on, you know, you down there doing wrong, nigga. You understand what if somebody then came upon the soil, which is causing the kings of upper Egypt to go down there and straighten shit out. And as you can see, if you look to the right, which I think I have a, a bigger picture where you see them heads has been chopped off. Where that at? I think I got a bigger picture. God damn it. Yeah, I do. Up here. Yeah, here. Right up here. here. Right here. You see that? So you see each one of them is a thought. You understand? Them is foreigners. They, they came on our soil. Okay? They didn't came on our soil. So we've been, we've been dealing whether they was African, whether they, whatever they was. They had no business of being on the goddamn soil. You understand what I'm saying? You can see right there, each one is symbolic of a thousand people. So you say one, two, three, four, five, 10,000 heads was cut the fuck off. You understand what I'm saying? So we talking about this ain't no little war right here. When you kill a 10,000 motherfucker, nigga, that's serious. You know, that's serious. And as you can see at the top, that this is the first military or naval operation in world history because not only was it a military uh, uh operation it was also a navy okay they came down there on ships so this is one of the first not just of a boat but of a naval operation where they where the soldiers came down on boats which means that they were marines you got you got a navy and you got marines okay now if you come upon the land then that's an army but if you got soldiers on a boat then that's marine. So they, that's the first, you know, uh, 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 documentation of a navy of marines in the history of the world. Okay, and you can see hey, Ru, you, uh, uh, on the uh, on the totem poles. You also see Anubis, and you see the placenta of the African king. Okay, so you see right there that they didn't cut heads off, and right there that shows the boat. This is the first king. This ain't the second king or third king, or this ain't the fifth dynasty. This is the very first dynasty. In many, in many instances, they don't even put Nama in the first dynasty. He's dynasty zero. Okay, he ain't even in the first. That this is dynasty zero. They coming down here to unite the two lands. Okay, Ethiopia and Egypt. This is what's happening. They're uniting the, and they were already united, but some somebody then came upon the soil, which caused the king to come down there and, you know, perform military operations to free, free the land. And what's clear, you see right here, you see the twa, which they call the pygmy, which are in charge of uh, spiritual divine ceremonies and rituals. That's why Ptah, the first god, major god of ancient Egypt, and who the Greeks named Egypt after, E-G-Y-P-T-A-H, Egypt Ptah. Egypt was named after Ptah, and Ptah was a twa, was a little, what they call a pygmy, just like Bess. So you see that the two earliest gods of ancient Egypt were uh, twa. And I don't like to call them pygmy, but if I say pygmy, you will understand because that's what the Western world, you know, the derogatory name. Now, if you look behind the twa, and you see the twa got on the cats up the top. If you look, and it looked like a couple of them got some dreads coming off the back too. You understand? Because you can see the length on the back. But the two in the back, you can see they got the caps on a patah to show you already that this priesthood is already in full fucking effect. Okay, and then you see what behind the twa? You see that African woman. You see that African woman come down there and she got dreadlocks and she got prestige. It looked like she got on the leopard skin too, which means she was a, a high priestess of the, the priesthood. 
And she's coming down there to check on Nam. Okay, let me go on down here. When you see the whole, uh, you see the whole uh, ceremony right here, I put this one up. You see her come down. She's in front of Nam. She going down there to check to make sure he done done what he's supposed to be. You see he already got that flail in his, if you see his arm, you see the, the arm that's, uh, you know, to, to his, to, to his to the side of his thigh got the uh, mallet in it. But if you look at his uh his left arm, it got the flail in it. So the flail is already the whole uh, uh office of Pharaoh is already in existence. There's no development, even with the first king, there is no de it's already developed because this is actually an office that's taken from Nubia that the first pharaohs were not the pharaohs of Egypt, but the pharaohs of Nubia and Ethiopia. And then when Egypt was established, they adopted the ceremonies of the ancient Ethiopians. Okay, and so for all the so-called Freemasons and Masons, when they wear their apron, you already see the apron of Nama. And if you look up in front of Nama, what do you see? You see the catfish at the top over what? The mallet. OK, which is ceremonial in, in even in damn Freemason. You see the you see the uh, you see the mallet. You see the uh, the, uh, the not the mallet, but the chisel. OK, up on over the uh, uh, up under the catfish, which is right in front of Norma, right in front of his face. You see two symbols. The top is a catfish and right up under it is the chisel. OK, so you see the mallet in his hand which is also a symbol of Freemasonry. You see the chisel, which is also a symbol of Freemasonry. You also see the apron, which is a symbol of which they all stole from ancient Egypt. Let me, let me keep it moving. Let me keep it moving. Now, I want y'all to see this. If you look at the top right there in the middle, again, you see the catfish and you see the chisel. You see what? Hede Ru. And why she's at the top? Because Hede Ru, is also symbolic of goddess Nu, which the two goddesses represent the universe. Goddesses of the universe. So you will see many times where Nu, who is the goddess of the, you will see the cosmos and the universe inside of her body. Many times you will see Hede Ru, the cow goddess, with the stars inside of her body. And this is where you get the term Milky Way. Okay, you get the term the Milky Way because what? That this is in veneration of that holy goddess, cow goddess of ancient Egypt, which the Jews or Hebrews call the golden calf. Now, if you look in the middle between them two goddesses, you will see what? The catfish and you'll see the chisel, but they, is, they inside of a structure. What is that structure? That is a, 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 a symbol, an ancient symbol of the temple. If you go to Saqqara and you can look right, you can look on the two ends of the, the, the square, you will see the uh, the indentations inside of the temple that's also inside of the symbol on the Narmas palette to show you that even the, uh, the, uh, the uh, representation of what the temple came to be in Egypt was already constructed, okay? From the very first, King, the temple was already designed. It was already temples before Egypt. Okay, we got to come, we got to do better with our history. We so ancient, we got goddamn all timers disease. We don't even, we didn't lost, we didn't lost our memory on how ancient we are. We got historical all time. Okay, but I'm here to, you know, give you a shot of that good melanin so we can get you up out of your madness and get you up out of, you know, your forgetfulness. And you understand what I'm saying? Get you back on the right path so you can understand that you are ancient people. And if you and, and you got to understand there is no other civilizations on the planet at this time. At 3100, there is no Greece. There is no Rome. There is no Mesopotamia. There is no India. There is no China. There is no other civilizations on the goddamn planet. Because the Africans was the ones that went out to all the other continents and established those civilizations. Okay, let me keep it moving. Let me keep it moving. What I want, and we see here, 
we see here, which later you see the Pharaoh as the bull, okay? And you can see, if you look to the right, you see what it looks like as a, uh, like a fort, like a fortification. You know what I'm saying? If you ever seen a fort or a castle where they build large walls around a fortification and it, so, it shows the bull, you know, that's Osiris, which later became symbolic of Osiris and just a, you know, the bull is a symbol of strength. It is one of the great symbols of the Pharaoh and you can see that the bull, the great bull of Egypt then broke the fortification of the fake foreigners that then come upon our land. And at this point, you can see they got straight noses and they're nothing but Europeans. So even at the early time, we had already been going upside their head. You understand? They've been trying to creep in and you understand what I'm saying? Vagabond, they ain't even got no clothes on. You understand? Nothing but vagabonds and shit. And so it showed the great bull of ancient Egypt breaking the fortifications of, of the foreigners. Okay? Now let me come down here because we just talked about this. And so if you look all the way to the left, what you I just showed you the chisel which the masons took. I showed you the uh the apron, which is also a symbol of the masons, and then we see what? What is that? That's the uh the square. That's the square right there. You understand what I'm saying? And many times they'll put the plumb line down through there. You understand what I'm saying? And so if you come over here and you see right there the masons with the square, and you come over and look to the top. And you see to the left at the top, you see the square. You see the square. All of this showing you that the Africans was using uh, uh, Masonic not to do no fake shit. They were actually construct. We real masons. We're not op we're not speculative masons. We're operative masons. Speculative masons is those who use the symbols of real masons, but use it in allegory. You understand? Standing on the square, even though. They don't even motherfucker, he can't, you know, lay one brick on top of another. He uses the, the terms of Masonic talk, using the, the ruler, using the square, using the plumb line, but they only use it in allegory. That means that they're speculative of Masons. Well, these is real Masons. These is operative Masons. And we could prove that by many of the great architectural wonders that are still standing on the planet today okay and so this is a full-fledged look and so even then i had to look at this because these is one of the battle these is one of the early palettes this is not the normal palette but this is another palette and you can see that the lion is symbolic of the king and so you can see many woolly head motherfuckers was on that on the on the on the uh end of that too so we don't know if these you know some of our brothers and sisters had sided with some foreigners or whatever but what whatever it took to free the land the brothers and sisters from the south came down and when they came down from that point egypt was a continuous nation for over three thousand years okay for over three thousand years and as you can see, you can see the vultures. If you look at the bottom, it's pecking on their head. And you know, the vulture is also symbolic of the African woman. So they came down there, but we see that them brothers had, had woolly hair. So it was, uh, uh, you know, it was a war between Africans and, and, and foreigners. You know, the lower, the lower region, where, which leads to the outside of Africa, you know, get, get a lot of vagabonds. And so maybe they came and, and, and conjured up a plan where they're going to usurp the land from the, the true Africans who it belonged to. And they found out that that's just not something that's going to happen. And so they ass got put to the sword. And you can see at the top one, ass, you can look like one, but his ass is in chains too. It looked like his foot on top of that motherfucker. But the king is the lion. And so we'll be looking at many of these uh, relics and we'll be doing our own interpretations, looking deep into and making clear understandings of what happened in the ancient world. Because if we do not understand, because it's happening again and again and again, is these niggas will always side 
with some of these foreigners to try to usurp their own brothers and sisters. And they doing it right now today. If that beast will give them a crumb or a couple more crumbs than they get they all, the other African, then them niggas will side with that beast and work for that beast to keep they got damn foot on your neck. So today we're learning a lot because it's continuing to still happen. You you un, you re, you you interpret history because history is today. If you do not learn the errors of history, you doomed to goddamn repeat. And when you understand the greatness of history and those attributes that cause you to be great, then you can come into greatness again. Okay, so. We look, I'm going to go and show you again, the great king, scorpion. Wait a minute, let me show y'all something. So y'all can understand that that's the worship of the black woman. I'm going to show y'all. And these are some other tombs down here, but I'll I, I get in that, into that when I get into the other kings. You understand what I'm saying? You see scorpion, you see that this is, uh, you know, and this is uh, the goddess Serket. And but she's mixed with uh Isis at this time. So when you talk about the Scorpion King, huh? You talking about the Scorpion King, you got to understand that the worship of the Scorpion was the worship of the African woman. Let me bring that up there. Let me bring so we got a clear understanding before we get out of here. You see the scorpion, and then you come and see the scorpion king. You got to understand, he was worshiping the black woman. The black woman is God from day one, nigga. Straight up. Straight up. From, from day one. You see right there, the scorpion king was the son of the great goddess Isis and Sir Cat. You understand what I'm saying? There it is. And then you come over here, great Nama, and you see him right there. He's the king of all kings, coming to free the people, coming to free the land of foreign rule. I want to thank y'all for coming out today, family. We're dealing with the founders of ancient Egypt. We're dealing with the, the founding pharaohs of ancient Egypt, Narma, and the Scorpion King. We're gonna get we're gonna get deeper into this because we're just getting into our series on ancient Egypt. And we're not coming up off of ancient Egypt for the next couple months. So we're going in very, very deep. I didn't dealt with all the other civilizations, but it's time to come home. And I intend on spending at least two, three months on the greatness of the Nile Valley. So y'all motherfuckers get, get ready because we about to go in super deep on the Nile Valley. Let me come on out of here because I got to get on over here. I got to get on over here to uh, Sarah's page because we got to get into the color spectrum of cosmic consciousness. We're dealing with blackness today. I'm going to go down the... the, the uh, the five, six uh, most prolific colors of ancient Egypt. I don't deal with the Hindu shit. I deal with the colors of ancient Egypt, okay? And so many of them colors is colors of the Hindus, and y'all can deal with whatever you want to deal with. And I'm going to be going into areas that niggas don't even know I'm going into. And I'm going to be pulling a lot of coat tails. I'm going to be digging in niggas' chest, supposed to be African. I'm going to get into, you know, the science of mommy water. You know, and you know, I got to get into some of that because many of our African, uh, you know, scholars and priests didn't stray away. And I got to dig in your chest today. It can't be no crackatosis in this day and age. We got to come up out of that crackatosis. And you know, a lot of shit that niggas say that we just cannot slide. There is no white gods and goddesses in Africa, nigga. And once you understand the, the color spectrum of cosmic consciousness, from an African perspective, and like I told you, you cannot take another man's eyes and put them in your skull, nigga. We all got our own particular interpretation of the world and the universe because we are pre-coded with predestined responsibilities to the cosmos. And we're the chosen of the creator because the creator and the God that we understand is the sun. And when you understand that the sun is God, there's a clear thing about solar divinity. It separates the chosen from the curse. That's the one thing that solar divinity does. And when you accept that the sun in that, when you accept the sun as the creator, that means you accept all cosmic law. You accept all the great heavenly bodies and the energies and forces that's you know intertwined cohesively, intertwining 
everything in creation. That's what you accept. Okay, and when you accept the sun, it's clear that it will clearly shine the light on those who are chosen and those who are cursed. And when you accept the fact that that man is cursed, it is, it is your divine responsibility to remove his oppression from off of your back because there's no, and being chose is irresponsible and it, it, it's, it's a, a shame to the God Almighty to allow something that's less than the, lesser than you to have rule over you and oppress you. That's the first thing that's going to cause you. When you come into your divinity, it's going to tell you, you got to get this man foot up off of your neck. Okay. All that humming and goddamn burning incenses and goddamn humming and um, doing yogas in oppression with the man foot on your back. That's not divine. That's spookology. That's spook fucking ology. So family, come on over. Run on over to Sarah right now. God damn it, run on over to Sarah Sue and said the YouTube page right now. Get on that motherfucker. And I'm gonna run down the, the cosmic uh spectrum of, of cosmic consciousness. We're dealing with blackness today. And then we're gonna go to green, we're gonna go to blue, we're gonna go to red, and we're gonna go to white. We're going to go to white, too, and we're going to deal with that from the Nile Valley perspective. And we're going to clear this up because you've been programmed through colors. Because even when they program shit, they program it through colors. And so they didn't program to look at your greatness as something that's negative and evil. And so before you even see, soon as you see something without even having a true definition of what it is, your mind had already been pre-programmed to look at it negative. And so you cutting yourself off from your divinity when you've been programmed by another man. OK, so family, run on over there right now. Thank you for coming out. General Sara soon said he will be back on this page. You know, I'm going to try to get over there and do the work within an hour, less than an hour. And then me and Pharaoh going to be right back on General Seti page 8, 8 to 830. Probably closer to 830, but God damn it, be there anyway. We're going in on Vladimir. The Yugoslavian con artist who had enough nerve to open up his mouth on the great master teach baby. I can't take no more. I got to get the steak, I got to get the hammer, and I got to go to Romania and I got to put the steak in Vladimir Hart. He the motherfucker that spoke ill of the master, and I got to deal with him. And I'm gonna speak loud and clear, and I hope that motherfucker got enough heart to say something to me, because as soon as he say something to me, I'm going to set this motherfucking internet on fire, scorching his ass, okay? I'm going to set this motherfucker on fire and anybody that fuck with him, okay? You niggas better move back when I jump on this beats, straight up, because I'm going to have no problem in cutting into your ass, and I hope that I see one of you niggas, and you can talk to me man to man, nigga, and I could deal with you, because, again, there's too many of you Negroes to give these beasts a platform to speak ill on the master teach. I seen many of you niggas sat right up there when he disrespected. You shouldn't even say at that point you should have got up and walked the fuck off the man platform. But you did not. You sat there with a bogus. And goddamn, you speak any ill on any of my master teachers. Bitch, I'm cussing your ass out. I might knock you out, but I'm leaving your platform at that time. But you niggas ain't got the heart because that's not y'all. Real teaching, nigga. Use a lackey for the beast, and I'm going to get on you niggas to that. I'm going to get on you. So, family, stay in the house. Be in the house. This is the General Sarah Susan said he's saying, hey, arm yourself with knowledge. Bang on that wicked-ass beast daily. Liberation through African education and confrontation. I'm out. Sarah Susan said in two seconds. Boom.